Hello, entrepreneurs, dreamers, business owners, and happy people with high hopes. Welcome to Cash Flows with your host, Cash Matthews. All right. Well, there is no time like the present to do something that is magnificent. So let's get this party started. I'm Cash Matthews, and I'm your host here at a show that we like to call Cash Flows. And our topics are various things that will make life better, uh, business, money, finance, and bigger life questions like, uh, what color worm should you use when bass fishing? And do you like ketchup on hot dogs? And can you imagine a world with no hypothetical situations, right? So uh, dad jokes will rule the day here, and we are here to promote the good life. And uh, we hope you'll share a few minutes of your life with us each week as we explore those topics that make life better. So I am here with my cohort, uh, Kenneth Bacham. Kenneth, Welcome to Cash Flows. Uh, what's a nice guy like you doing in a place like this? <laughs> Thanks, Cash. So what had happened was I was in a Tijuana prison uh, a little while back. Um, I, I think this is a true story. I'll have to double check on that later. But uh, but no, just here bringing that uh, that IT audio video experience, trying to help everything uh, work real smoothly for us. So we have a good time here. And, uh, and then hopefully I'll uh, stay out of jail uh, next time I'm across the border. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll make things a little, little fun there, but, but Cash, you know, enough about me. This is not my show, right? This is your show. You're kind of helping us get together. So tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of the idea behind this podcast. Well, first, Kenneth, thank you. Uh, thank you for asking that, especially since we put it in the script. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> uh, do, do, let's, let's play some of the sounds for our audience real quick. Of course. Let's do that. We have should, the, should we have a dad joke that hits? Of course. There we go. Okay. And should we do something just magnificent? What might the audience do? Oh, oh, okay. oh yeah. The, that's the cash, cash money right sound. there. I dig it. All right. Well, so Kenneth, real, I, I want to tell my life story and, and this will go by very quickly an hour to two hours. Uh, it all, <laughs> there, see, there we go. So it all really, it began when I was eight years old and I was watching my parents have what uh, Kyle would call a spirited conversation about money problems. And that was about the time I started to clench my jaw. And uh, at that time, I realized I am not cut out for normal life. And I know lots of people feel that way. But I told my mom right then, Mom, I am never getting a job. In my brain, job and money and problems and yelling. And uh, so I told my mom that, and she always kind of laughed at me. And then by age 14, uh, I was absolutely not excited about getting a job and working in the traditional sense. And my guidance counselor in high school was telling me, hey, why don't you, it's your deal. Why don't you work a little bit harder? You know, how are you going to get a good job one day? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm never going to get a job ever. And, uh, you know, she thought that was, uh, she thought that was crazy. So what I did do at age 14, I went to the richest, wealthiest man I knew. And I said, sir, how did you get wealthy? And I had a notebook with me and I interviewed him and I began to copy his life. And he talked to me about investing and buying real estate. And I had five sources of income at 14. I had a paper out and I mowed yards and clean pools and babysat and worked on bicycles as I was uh, very fortunate to be among the formative years of BMX bicycle racing. But uh, yeah, I had revenue. I just didn't know what to do with it. And, um, you know, I got busted uh, And this. A lot of my friends are probably like, I got busted in the third grade, Kyle, for cheating off of my friend, Joe Mark Cowden. I always learned like in first and second grade, I learned if I set one back and over to the left, I could copy off of him. So he was my great benefactor in the third grade. But unfortunately, third grade, my teacher was also my aunt Dorothy and she was violent. Yeah. You, I got a laugh out of that. Um, man, she, she wanted to make an example of me and she caught me cheating off of, of Joe Mark. And she said, why are you cheating like this off of Joe Mark? And I thought that was the dumbest question I'd ever been asked. I'm like, Aunt Dorothy, I'm cheating off of him because he's smarter than me. And uh, I, I thought that made all the sense in the world. And, you know, then I found out later in life, it's okay to copy off your neighbor. If they're doing and they have what you want, it is completely all right to copy off of somebody who's gone down the path in front of you. And uh, so anyway, I was uh, 14 years old. I went and saw this fella. He taught me a little bit about the world and investing in real estate. And then at age 20, I found the financial world as a career. And, um, man, I, I told that guy that night that signed me up for my first career 
said, man, I'm going to do this all my life. And he says something cute like, you know, everybody says that, right? And I mean, well, okay, but I mean it. Uh, last August 15th was 42 years of doing wow. one thing steadily. I haven't had a job. If you're looking to hire me, I'm probably not the right guy. But uh, anyway, so we're, we're excited about that. High school was cool for me. I had a career in BMX racing, and I played in a band, and I pitched on the baseball team. I was on the debate team, and I, I became, um, the financial thing got put on hold. I became overcome by fumes, uh, perfumes and car fumes, for those of you that know what that means. And it slowed me down a little bit. By, by age 20, man, I was ready for action. And uh, so now here we are talking into a microphone about all those experiences, and hopefully my agony uh, will help somebody else, you know, get a head start in life. So cash flows, this podcast, this YouTube channel, uh, it's a show where we just want to help people take the next step in their life. That might be in a relationship. It might be in a business. Maybe they're in a business. Maybe we can help. Maybe we've been down the road. You know, for those of you out there listening, don't let your chapter three or four compare to Kyle's chapter 20 or my chapter 50, but uh, we're here to help. And if we can help, awesome. And if not, man, having a podcast is awesome for your ego. And so cash flows is here to help. And our philosophy is fire, aim, ready. And so many people never get around to pulling the trigger. Yeah. And uh, with that, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce our first guest ever, the legendary Mr. Kyle Sullivan. And he is the founder and leader and creator of a program called Unleash the Champ. And Kyle is married to Ginger. He has two amazing kids and three mediocre kids. Just kidding. Sorry, I just insulted your family. <laughs> Ginger, that's that's not true. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Look, we are going to have some fun here. Absolutely. And if you get insulted in the process, just hit me back. It's wide open, baby. So Kyle's married to Ginger, actually has two very beautiful kids that I adore. And uh, he spent many years as the pastor at Life Church. And so, man, he has been through life on many levels, business, personal, spiritual, and now he is out helping people in the field of personal achievement, business, growth, getting unstuck. For some of you that feel stuck, man, you're going to love this version of Cash Flows. So y'all help me welcome here to the microphone, Mr. Kyle Sullivan. All right, Come on go. now. Be clapping in Come your car when now. you listen to this. Unless All you're right. driving. Unless you're driving, then clapping your mind. Well, Kyle, man, like we met, uh, how did we meet? We met a little over a year ago at this event called the Tulsa Business Owners Networking Group. Give us a minute about how we met Absolutely. about this thing called the bong. Give us a minute about that yeah. before we dig into you. Yeah, so I got added to the bong. I, I want, I'm giving credit to Rob Boyd for yeah. adding me. Uh, we do each other from church, and uh, he added me to this this Facebook group, and I saw Bong, and I went, I didn't like that when I did drugs, so <laughs> um, I'm out on that, and I just stayed silent. I didn't look at it. I was just kind of lurking, uh, and then I was speaking at an event in Oklahoma City, driving back on the turnpike, and you went live in the in the group. I was like, all right, I got a mount on my phone. I'm just going to start listening, and I pull over on the turnpike. And I start gassing you up in the comments. Like, come on, let's go. That's good. Okay, let's go. Then you in the video, and I get a message that says, coffee? Question mark. I said, yep. When? Tomorrow. And so that was July 27th, 2022. We have coffee. And you asked me to, after, through our conversation, at the end of it, said, hey, I need a speaker for my event on Tuesday. Okay, cool. And so I show up to the, my first bong event. I got to speak. And then, you know, as they say, the rest is history. Man, I love that. D do me a favor as the guy that uh, works on the bong. Tell us a little flavor, how you perceive the bong, what it's doing in the Tulsa community, maybe how it's benefited you or benefited others. What have you seen? 100%. The bong is a disruptor. So we have some rules here at the bong, and it's to meet people, make friends, and allow business to flow from that. It's a disruptor because other groups aren't doing what we do. Uh, other groups aren't focused as much on maybe relationships first. It's more transactional. One of the things, I think it's a breath of fresh air, honestly, for a lot of uh, business owners that are lonely. Uh, 
business owners that feel the pressure, the stress of just running day to day, no matter their stage in business, whether they're just getting started, they're maybe working another job, maybe they have something going on, um, they're in the scale process, they're in the stable process. It's a breath of fresh air and it's a disruptor. I mean, two years ago, there was three people and now there's what, 5,500. Yeah. And so obviously it's meeting a need. Obviously it's creating connections. And some of my closest friends over the last year have come from showing up, pulling over on the turnpike and gassing this guy up that was saying some things I enjoyed on a Facebook group. Well, dude, we're, we're glad you're here, man. You've become a big part of what the bong is. And, uh, you know, for me, as the as one of the early adopters of this, I had a goal just to make some friends. And, uh, you know, just so the world knows who you are, my father passed away seven weeks ago. You were the knock at the door that said, hey, I'm coming in. And, uh, you know, to be able to make that kind of friend through a business group, you know, often it's it's tough to turn friends into business partners, but it's a lot easier to turn business connections into friends. And 1, man, we have surely done that where we got... Yeah. We're planning some things. Absolutely. I just want to say that. Well, Ty, Kyle, tell us a little bit. Um, let's just give me a brief history, just a few seconds. I know you were a pastor. Take us through pastor to now. Pastor to now. Uh, so I did. I got to be a part of uh, some amazing churches over the course of 12 years total, 10 years full time. Um, got to be a part of First Baptist Broken Arrow. Uh, that's how I got to Oklahoma is I was in school in Arkansas second go around and uh in college which was much better than the first uh and I did an internship in student ministry uh showed up here May 15 2010 and uh was went to this college ministry party kind of summer kickoff and uh this blind runs poolside and uh you know I just do one of these things if you're if you're listening I'm turning my chair in my head and I asked the one guy I knew in Oklahoma and I said who is that he said, that's ginger. I said, I like ginger. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was lust at first sight because she was fine and I wanted her to be mine. And uh, so we started dating. That's what got me into Oklahoma. And uh, I was doing the long distance deal. She was in school here and I was in school and, uh, in Arkansas. I moved here and uh, worked. My first job in Oklahoma was Planet Fitness. I went in to uh, get a gym membership because I figured I could at least stand on the corner and get 10 bucks a month. Uh, to be able to work out, and uh, they had they were hiring, so I I I got that, and I was walking in the mall and got a job at Buckle because they said, "Hey, you ever thought about selling jeans?" Nope, but I needed afternoon job, so I did that. Did Planet Fitness in the morning, Buckle in the afternoon. Worked at the church. Ginger and I got engaged uh, July of 2012, and uh, got married June of 2013, and in that time got a. Uh, Got into uh, ministry at Life Church. Was there for seven and a half years. Then went to Transformation Church for about 18 months after that. And uh, July 1st, 2020, started to unleash the champ. Uh, kind of in the, the start of the hockey stick of the pandemic. And, uh, you know, three and a half years later, here we are. So in the middle of the pandemic, uh -huh. you leave your secure job. Yep. You had a relatively new wife. Uh, well, at well, that I point, mean, we've been, yeah, relative. Piper was only eight months old. Okay. So new so child. You, so you've got a new child, yep. a wife, you're in a fairly new place uh -huh. still, and you give all that up to go unleash the champ. That's right. Yeah, that, uh, if the pandemic didn't happen, we wouldn't be talking. So, so what's that, what's that conversation like with your wife? Like, hey, honey, we have stability. Uh -huh. We are well known. We are comfortable. Yep. Things are going great. Yep. I think we should give all that up. Yeah. Right. So right. we were on a we were on a muted Zoom call. I was in a spare room. Ginger was in our bedroom. Piper, who's again eight months old at this time, is in the living room with uh, with Mimi. And they say, "Hey, July first, we're coming back to the office." And I just felt this feeling of, I won't go back there as a staff member. Golly. And, you know, I love fire. Fire aim ready because that's my that's my life. And I text Ginger and I say, Hey, are you in a meeting? She said, No. I said, Come here. And I don't I don't do well with like lead ins. Uh she walks in, she goes, What's up? I said, I think I'm supposed to quit my job <laughs> about that fast. And she goes, Oh. 
And the husbands that are listening, I don't know. I mean, if my wife gets a couple octaves higher, choose my next words carefully. Because as you mentioned, we may get into some spirited fellowship. <laughs> and uh, and so she goes, well, what are you going to do? And I went, I'm going to do what I've done for the last 12 years. I'm going to train. I'm going to develop. I'm going to speak. I'm going to coach. I'm going to consult. I'm going to build teams and empower leaders. That's what I'm going to do. And she looked at me for what felt like an eternity. And then she got a smirk on her face. She said, I think you may be the last person to realize what you should be doing. Well, I'm telling you. I, I called So she Ginger, already knew. I called Ginger the silent killer. She don't say much, which is great because I like to talk a lot. But when she does, it's something. So two weeks later, the next day. So two weeks later, I'm off the team. The day everybody comes back to the office was the first day that I was an entrepreneur. Okay, now I know how you seem in public and people perceive you in a certain way, but you're also a dad and a husband and a son. And Did you have any fear at that moment? Was there anything really pressing on you, or were you being completely led by faith? Oh, there's a, there's a ton of fear. Um, I had never been in it before. Now, uh, I joke in certain, like, yeah, I, I was full of excitement. That's how I got my first handful of clients. I was just so excited. Right. I was excited to eat. I was excited to pay my bills. <laughs> you like living indoors. Uh, yeah, I, I like living indoors. <laughs> um, but of course there's fear. Of course there's fear. But I'm futuristic in my strengths. So if anybody knows personal growth and development, there's a test called Strength Finder. And futuristic is one of those for me. And in those couple days before I made that jump, I imagined... At the time, it was just Piper. Now it's Piper and Bo. I imagine Piper one day saying, Dad, I got this opportunity. It's a great location, great job, package is great, benefits, all this is amazing. Or I got something I think could work. I got something that I'm kind of excited about. I'm kind of scared. Dad, what, what should I do? Well, of course, I'm going to say, go for it, baby girl. Do your thing. You got this. You can do it. And I knew my daughter's got me in her, so she feisty. <laughs> and I did not want to give her the chance to be able to say, well, Dad, you didn't. So that drove me in the beginning is I'm going to model, for better or for worse, what it's like to bet on yourself. Good for you. Well, we're, we are glad you're here. Kids are pretty amazing. And they don't really care what you say. They watch what you do. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, what you do speak so loudly, your children cannot hear what you say. Well, so so tell us something that people would be surprised by about Kyle Sullivan. Like, I know you can dance. Yep. I, I've, I've seen that. You were raised in an environment where you, <laughs> you know, you learned all those things. But tell us something that would surprise our listeners about you. Uh, something I don't talk about super much. Uh, I played sports all my life. Tried to walk on the football team, and that didn't work because I'm, I'm a solid 5'8 with the right amount of product in my hair. <laughs> and um, and so the strength and conditioning coach was married to the cheerleading sponsor of the university. And so I was a cheerleader in college. Wow. Okay. Uh, had never done anything before. Um, I got hurt more in cheerleading than I did in football or baseball wow. or powerlifting, any of the stuff I did prior to college. So you've always been an encourager then. Yeah. I mean, that's. That's probably great qualifications to unleash the champ. Absolutely. Right Very cool for you. So I, it's kind of crazy to start a business in the middle of a pandemic. And I know there had to, I mean, we just talked about the fear of a pandemic. How did the pandemic play into that decision? Did you feel like it was a good timing thing for you or did you just disregard it completely? I thought it was great. For one, people were, were forced to be used to being online. So I, I was not held geographically. For the Good. first 18 months of the business, I had zero clients in Oklahoma. Got it. So uh, if somebody wanted to engage you. I did it online. They, they don't have to be from Oklahoma. Nope. They, they could grab you and they could be from. Anywhere. You know. I, I did everything in the first 18 months through Instagram DMs. Got it. That's how I built the business. Got it. Okay. Well, so you built the business. You're here. How did, tell me, I know that you met Ginger early in Oklahoma. How did you get to Oklahoma? 
I moved here after graduation. So, well, I mean, but did anything bring you here? Anything specific? So I did an internship with uh, First Baptist Broken Arrow. Got it. My junior year of college in yeah. their student ministry. Okay. So have those relationships endured from them? I I know that everywhere we go, people are like, oh, there was Kyle Sullivan. Oh, yeah. Some of them still do. Yeah. Like maybe you should be the mayor of this town. I don't know. Everybody already knows you. I mean, uh, Mayor Wimpy does a great job in Broken Arrow, so I do not want to take <laughs> her position right now. There's a mayor called Mayor Wimpy? Yep. Okay. Got it. All right. So... You've, you've had a career now. It's yeah. going. You're up and running. And I think all of us have this story that we'd like to tell. But who's somebody along the way that invested in you in a way that you remember? First one was my third grade teacher, Miss Heflin. Yeah. Um, I got labeled growing up as a bad kid. A bad kid because I was rambunctious. I talked a lot. I didn't sit still. Um Thankfully, my parents didn't try to, like, label me with some ADHD or whatever and funnel medicine down me. Sure. Um, but Miss Heflin was the first one I remember her telling me, Kyle, you're not bad, you're bored. And her mission that third grade year was to ke- keep me as occupied as possible. She just had to outlast my energy. And she did that. Wow. And it was the first time that I felt I ha- I could contribute to a group of people. She had had me wiping down, you know, boards or, you know, we still had small town Louisiana. We had chalkboards. Um, and so I had to go bang the chalk, the, the erasers outside. Um, or I had to organize folders or, or check for broken crayons or whatever it was, sort papers, print stuff. She just kept me so occupied that I got the material. I was able to help others. And she really was the first one in a laundry list of people that I would say she was the first one to speak potential, not problems, on me. So if Mrs. Mrs. Heflin was sitting here in this chair, what would you want to say to her? Thank you. We still talk on Facebook. Yeah. Does she know what's happened in your Uh life? That's... And uh, I messaged her, um, I guess it's probably been a year ago now, and I just said, hey, how how was I as a kid? You know, because once I started having kids, I kind of wanted to know, hey, how was I? And that's where this whole this where this whole story came. And she said, we had to keep you occupied because you weren't, you were smart. You, you knew you were kind of cute as a kid. And so you really pushed your limits. And she goes, I was the first one to kind of change that narrative for you. And it, it followed me. I, I, I knew that, okay, if I could find a way to contribute, then I could be helpful. Beautiful. We're going to pause for a minute and we're going to have a word from our sponsors. Kenneth, take us away. This episode is sponsored by Elevate Coworking, MFP, My Financial Plan, CM Customs, and the Tulsa Business Owners Networking Group. This is your producer, Kenneth Bauckham. Do we, do we need to bite our lip there? Listen, come on. I'm here for it. <laughs> All live commercials here. Thank you, Kenneth. Absolutely. Um, so, Kyle, you work with a lot of people. And I, I work with a lot of people, and I'm always intrigued by their condition. You know, how did they get where they are? You know, I've always been a big believer that it's not what people are that holds them back. It's what they think they aren't. That's right. And if you could take a magic wand and wave it over, you know, you, you've got a lot of fans and a lot of constituency and a lot of people that watch you and follow you. But if you could do a magic wand, what's one thing that you would make a wish come true, an ability that you could grant people to do? Ability to dream. Okay. Talk about that. for Um, What does that look like? You ask people what they want. They're going to go, I don't know. Very few people can articulate what they want in life. Yeah, that's true. Very few people can, if you can't articulate what you want, you sure as heck ain't going to articulate how to get there. And this book that I read often says where there is no vision, the people People perish. perish. Yeah. And so if there is no dream, you'll never, you'll never move. If there's nothing that moves you, to get out of bed. There's nothing that moves you to stay up late. There's nothing that moves you 
when things are bad? I've been asked often in the last three and a half years, like, Kyle, how are you able to keep going? And my answer is the same every time. If you see what I see with my eyes closed, you keep going too. Amen, brother. That That is beautiful. I have a dream of what is to come, and I'm actively walking in it. But it's because I feel this ability to just decide, to decide what your dream is. You know, Kyle, in my, I work in the financial world, and it's the hardest question that I ask everybody when we go through the initial interview is, what do you want? When I waited tables, that was easy. We had a menu. Right. Found out that life has an unlimited thing on the menu list, and you can ask for anything. You you agree with that? 100%. And one of the first things with a an individual client that I work with, and we, we create this this dream life, this dream reality, this dream day, this dream week, is it goes down to simple this or that questions. Do you want this or that? Do you want a white house or a brown house? Do you want a red car or a blue truck? And you have to make it so simplistic. And what's funny is you get people saying this or that enough, they'll start coming up with their own things. I once watched this uh, video of Steve Harvey said every year he writes out 300 things he wants. I got, I've done it the last three years. The most I've gotten to is 119. Wow. It is really hard to come up with 300 things that you want. But he said he does it every year. And when he gets it, he marks it off, you know, add stuff to it throughout the year. But it's just, if I could wave that wand and just get people to dream again, we'd be in a much better place. So let's, uh, let's take that a little further. What let's talk about gratitude for a minute, because I, I'm a believer that until you realize how well off you actually are, you know, we live in this great country with clean water and electricity and, you know, fairly stable economic system. And, uh, man, things, I mean, to me, things are great in this country. If you allow them to be talk to us for a minute about gratitude for where we are versus where we're headed. Yeah. I like to say gratitude is the gateway to greatness and I suck at it. I was, I was, I have a really hard time not knowing things to be grateful for, but acknowledging like, man, I'm I'm not where I want to be, and I have a hard time being grateful for the things I, I have achieved. I have to really work at acknowledging what those things are. Well, tell it. Let's let's talk. What's something you're grateful for right now, this minute, currently? Uh, and you can't say your wife or kids. That's that's too easy, too cheesy. Yeah, I I'm grateful for the opportunities this year. I'm grateful for. The perseverance I've showed. I'm grateful for my ability to communicate on a thing like a microphone to hopefully impact some people. True that. Um, what was your goal for? Yeah, because you had this goal. Yeah. And we've been talking about it all year, and the year's almost over. What was your goal, January one? How many performances did you want to do? Uh, Thirty-two speaking events. Thirty-two speaking events. Where are we now? Counting this one. Uh, well, I, gosh, I hadn't even counted any of the podcasts. Uh, in person. So this would, if we're counting this, this would be 77. There's people around. You're in person. This this is 77. <laughs> there we go. Man, that's cash money right there. That is cash money right 78 there. 78 is tomorrow and 79 is Thursday. What what will it be like on last day of December? Where will you be? 79. 79. We probably need to throw a party and get him up to 80. <laughs> Anybody who's 79. <laughs> right. 80, right. that's the ticket. Okay, well, I mean, I I appreciate that. I, your your attitude about gratitude is meaningful to me, and I, I appreciate you taking a minute for that. So, right now, what's driving you? And and I, I want you to answer that in a way because, and and maybe you already did when you you know if you don't where there is no vision, the people perish. What is driving you? But there's a thing you want right now, and all you know you have a. I'm a Kyle fan. Like to be sitting here with you in our first ever podcast, it's a big deal for me. Like I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to totally be name dropping the rest of the day. Oh yeah. Hey, that's me and Kyle, Kyle and me, me and Kyle, Kyle and I, I and Kyle. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. It's not a big deal. It's just me and Kyle hanging out. Um, But what's driving you right now? Like that, man, you're a man on fire and with purpose and passion and perseverance. And uh, talk to us about what's, what's moving your needle right now. 
my kids, man. I look at Bo, particularly. Piper's awesome, but there's something about having my boy. Yeah. My legacy. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. How old is Bo right now? Two. And I love it when Piper calls me on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Piper calls and we don't even know that she's calling you. <laughs> she's just learned how cash looks on a phone. And, uh, yeah, man, my, I know that my dad, to this day, I would attribute to him as the hardest working man I know. He still works on the oil rigs up in North Dakota. Cold as all get out. Sub degree weather. Um, and he gave me a lot of things and gave me everything I needed, most of what I wanted. But the thing I wanted probably most that we've had to work through over the years is I wanted him. Yeah. I wanted him to teach me the things that I didn't know or need or know to want or whatever. And so what drives me is my son's grow, going to grow up, is growing up, watching me go and conquer. Watching me go and, as I say, unleash the champ. And, uh, yeah, that drives me. Um, when it comes to Piper... I mean, it drives me in a different way because if I'm so lucky, she's going to look at me as the standard of who she should one day marry. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of an easy layup to say kids, but there's depth to it. Well, I, I think in your world and watching you with your kids is one of the things I'm joyful about. I love watching you with your family and, uh, thank you for sharing that. So, um, we all go through seasons. We, we go through seasons and in our life, what, uh, what are you learning? What are you learning right now? Is there anything new that's coming up on the horizon where you're having an awakening? What are what is Kyle Sullivan learning? You teach a lot of people, but what are you learning right now? Yeah, I'm 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 gonna take it a little I'll pull back the curtain a bit. Uh so I was a pastor for twelve years and before that I was in school for being a pastor. So a lot of my spiritual walk was uh, either assigned to me or I was paid to follow Jesus. And so I'm learning really in the last year what it's like to actually like follow Jesus as a relationship with him um, when I'm not paid to and no one's checking in on making sure I do it. And so um, there's a lot of spiritual principles and truths that I, I spoke about on stage for years that are really coming alive now. Um and so that's that's been fun over the that, last few That months. is a profound thing to say. I was paid to follow Jesus. I was. And uh, wow. So the volunteer plan is working out pretty well then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about what you're reading. You and I exchange books. We play, you know, book club together. Let's talk about three books you think our listeners ought to read. Yeah. So one, uh, you know, I talked about the, the importance of dreaming. So magic of thinking big. It's a classic classic. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to give two that may be less, uh, known, but are impactful for me. One is the third door. It's by a guy named Alex Benaya. It really is just his story. However, his story <coughs> of how he got to success. He had a set thing. He was in college, med school, UCLA, families doctors all of this and then he just launches out and it's it's fascinating because most people like oh you got the front door the back door door closes there's always that third door that you don't see and it just it's a fascinating listen anytime that i am feeling discouraged about things not working how i thought they should i go and listen to parts of that book it's incredible um and then if you if you want one that's going to um, really drive the needle for you is be obsessed or be average. Grant Cardone, um, as he likes to say, Boba. Um, I would recommend getting the audio book on it because he narrates it. And when you just got a, a Cajun from Louisiana, like, hey baby, you know, it, like it's amazing. He, uh, he says my publisher should said, I shouldn't add this to the book, but well, I'm reading it right now. So I'm gonna put it in. He's just a rebel. Um, so be obsessed or be average. Uh, the third door, and uh, magic, of thinking magic of thinking big. Yeah, that's that was always been one of my favorites. Now you did a, a gig with Grant Cardone. You were on his national speaking yeah. tour kind of thing, and about twenty thousand people applied, and yep. it was a contest. It was a, yeah, it was uh, a a year ago Friday. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. It was about a year ago. Yep. How far did you go in that? Yeah. So uh, twenty 
27,000 registered audition, six audition cities, two virtual. Um, and they took, of that, 165 semifinalists, and I made the top 100. And what was what was incredible in that was they sat down, and that was the the catalytic spark, if you will, for the next year of what I've experienced this year. As I sat down, and they said, so tell us about your speaker business. And I went, I don't have a speaker business. And I'm in Hollywood, Florida. The the weather is brilliant. Like, it's just amazing. they like, look around. You should have a speaker business. And I'm like, yeah, I should be a speaker. And I came back, and the first time I introduced myself after that, I started saying I'm a professional speaker. And a lot of people would probably classify me as a motivational speaker, um, but people don't pay for motivation. They pay professionals. And so I'm a professional speaker. There you go. And, uh, yeah, it was it was wild. A year ago this week. So top 100 out of 27,000. Mm-hmm. There's 50 states. Yep. So that's like two per state. So here we're here with Kyle Sullivan in the top two of all professional speakers in Oklahoma. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. I like that math maths. That maths up with me. All right. Well, Kyle, we're going to wrap up. Well, we're going to, at the end of our show, end of cash flows, we want to have a professional thought, a glimpse of an idea, something that you could say to our listeners, a golden nugget. I don't know what people call it, but uh, we need a takeaway from Kyle Sullivan that our listeners can take and believe in. And we want to hear from you. What's the one thing you would tell whoever's listening, all three of our listeners here? The loudest boos come from the cheapest seats. If people are critiquing what you've done, it's because they can't. They can't comprehend where you're going. What got you here won't get you there, so don't worry about it and keep moving. Cool. Keep moving, man. Keep moving. I think that is beautiful. Well, Kyle, I'm going to lead us out of here. Uh, With that, that's our first show of what we hope are very, very many. If you're a listener and you would download and share this show with your friends, that will absolutely increase mine and Kenneth's ego, and uh, hopefully the content will have some value to you. Uh, I know, Kyle, you've hoped so many people overcome obstacles in their personal lives, in their business lives, and, uh, you know, we we wanted you as our first speaker from the minute we had this idea. What you do is vital. It is foundational, uh, and it is generational when people log on to what you do. Um, So we're glad you all stopped by for a while with us uh, to our team here at Elevate. Our video and audio producer, Mr. Kenneth Bacham, our host and sponsor, Ms. Lori Zeller, and uh, Clarence Shaw at CM Customs. But mostly to you, our listeners, our watchers, thanks for being here. If you want to reach out and find us on Facebook, uh, man, we would love to have that kind of relationship with you. And until our next show, y'all make good choices, be nice to each other, love one another, and let's make today one of the best ever. Good night to our four listeners in Salisaw, Henrietta, Wagoner, Bowlegs, and to the three of you that keep on liking our posts on Facebook. Y'all need anything from Quick Trip? That's our show for today. Stay tuned for another riveting edition of Cash Flows. 